In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can introduce uh, a more alive ambience by introducing randomized one-shot sounds. Uh, we've looked at the bed of the ambience, which is you know, normally some kind of constant tone, room tone, or looping sounds produced by various bits of machinery or objects in the environment. But over the top of that, an ambience comes alive through use of uh, randomized one shots that uh, happen over the top in various layers. So this warehouse now we're going to give it a spooky vibe uh, so we're back to our audio editor just identifying some sounds and in our spooky folder uh, we've got a bunch of these bowed cymbal sounds which are uh, quite effective in conjuring that, that kind of atmosphere. that. So just making a note, make a note of the ones we want. So we've got uh, the metal 04 and 05 and what are these like? Okay, we might have a bit of that as well. Now I notice here that this is actually recorded at 96k 32 bits, which is very nice for uh, the sound quality and for editing it and playing around with it, etc. But um, UDK is not going to accept a sound at 32 bits anyway, and um, 96k is going to take up a whole lot of memory, uh, as is that little silent gap at the beginning and that at the end, so we can get rid of that. So let's just try and take that down to something a little bit more reasonable. So 16 bits, 22. And we'll see how that sounds. Okay, still pretty spooky. I think we could uh, bring it out a bit earlier and get rid of that. So I'm going to save that now. Uh, e spooky metal high one. Okay, and maybe we'll just identify a couple more. Okay, so uh, pulse two and three. So um, let's go back to our package and import those sounds. Now they were in the spooky folder and we edited that one and then we said we were going to have the metal uh, ones and also the pulse two and three and we're going to import them into that. Uh, let's, let's create a group for these just to keep them separate uh, make them easier to find so now we see within our package we've got a separate group save our package and then they're all ready to go now we don't want these just looping around like a room tone we want them played uh, at random times and in a random order and the other thing we might do to vary the sounds a little bit is to add some pitch variation and some volume variation so the actor we want to do all those things is the ambient sound non-loop. So I'm going to right click in my level, add actor. It's not in the this the basic uh, list so I'm going to look at all templates and I'm going to pick ambient sound non-loop. Uh, I've obviously got a sound selected in my content browser already so it's just could choose to add that one to that sound. Uh, now there it is. You can see this is a, a red icon, uh, unlike the normal non, uh, the ambient sound symbol, which is blue. Right, if we go into its properties, what we can see is that this is actually made up of uh, a number of sound slots. We'll put in a number of sounds, and then we've got this delay min, delay max. So uh, we could say, right, I don't want these sounds to repeat any more often than every two seconds. But sometimes you might wait a bit longer, so they might wait up to four seconds. So then we have 
Uh, it's going to pick a random time interval between those two and then it's going to pick a random one of these to play. You can make some of these more frequent than others by adjusting the weighting setting um, but at the moment we're just going to keep them all the same. So we're going to expand those sound slots. The spooky metal high is already in there so we just need to add that one and uh, that one. So I'm just using the green arrow to add whatever I've got selected in the content browser to these slots. And there we go. While we're here, the other thing we're going to do is have some randomization in the pitch. So sometimes it may actually play those sounds at 0.6 of their original pitch and we're also going to vary the volume so sometimes it will play them quite quietly sometimes it will play them at nearly full volume okay so that's the ambient sound on loop so if we go into our level now we should hear that kind of those sort of sounds being randomly played generating a spooky atmosphere So it's important that you play, you have a very good idea of how long you expect the player to be in this particular environment. And then you hang around for a while and you see, well, my delay min-max, uh, is the sounds happening too frequently, not frequently enough? Do maybe I need several of these ambient sound non-loops in the level? Uh, so I get overlapping sounds and they, they do different things. So... Uh, you you know you might have several with different sounds in the sound slots, so you're building your ambience up of individual elements that are randomized, and then that will stop the environment from being repetitive. If you just used a, a loop, eventually the player would feel that they've heard that sound, and then it's followed by that sound, and we've heard that particular scenario before, and that would never happen in a real. Um, environment and so it breaks that kind of immersion in the level so it's good to have ambient sound simples as a bed but then the rest of your ambience should be produced using these uh, randomized sounds using the non loops over the top and probably several layers of them to produce a convincing ambience now um, we're next going to come on to look at sound cues where you can recreate exactly the same thing but you can also it's layers of additional functionality and we'll start taking a look at those in our next tutorial